Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hooks and Ladders. My name is Blair Packham. My name is Alistair Bradley. And we're here to talk with you about songwriting. And today we have another special guest. We have a, a fantastic uh, songwriter, singer, bass player, engineer, producer, uh, and, a, and a dear friend, Annalise Nerona. Hi. All the way from Prince Edward County. How are you? Ooh, I'm good. How are you guys? Good, good. So jumping right into this, you, you have a long history of working in the jingle world. I do. That's the commercial music world for radio and television, the music beds that go underneath commercials. Yes. And yes. You, you did, yeah, you did that for years and years and years. As an engineer, arguably primarily, but then you, you got into writing um, for, for projects uh, as they came up. And, and what I want to know is, as a songwriter, as a person who writes songs for themselves, what's the difference between writing for yourself and writing to a brief, writing to a commission, basically? Oh, that is a hard question. <clears throat> um, not a ton, but also a ton. Um, like, I, I, my brain just went, oh, is it that you, uh, like, if there is any depth or something, do you, do you take that song? Like, if you were writing to a brief and you started writing something that was really good, my brain goes, do you want to keep that for yourself? Or do you, do you want to give it to the commercial? But the only way to win commercials is to really write them like you want to win, like, like it is your best song every time. Um, <clears throat> so I think you're always giving it all. The shortcoming of, of spending a lifetime writing 30 seconds and 60 seconds and trying to get to the, the hook in that time is that it sort of um, makes you forget your patience when you're writing full songs um, <clears throat> and song structure um, can take its time uh, and in commercials it cannot. You just have to get to the point really quickly. Um, so how does it affect my writing? That's a funny question because I'm currently in the beginning stages of uh, writing a new record that I hopefully will put out next year. And I actually spent a lot of last year writing to brief, and I'm finding um, it a little bit hard to tap into my deeper feelings as a lyricist, because um, as a commercial lyricist, it, you either are slightly lighter, like, or slightly more broad with your thoughts, not necessarily lighter. I think broad is a better word. Like, like you want it to have an appeal across a lot of people. Whereas when you're writing for yourself, you can be very specific and hope that there are people that also will tap into what you are feeling. Um, yeah. Am I getting way off topic? What was the question again? No, you're 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 just fine. But I I think we're hearing your uh, which is fine by the way. We're hearing your dog breathing. Oh yeah, yeah. So sorry. So the dog. No. I have an English bulldog. She's on the floor. She snores that's, very loudly. That's fine. This is room for four on this uh, episode of Books <laughs> and Ladders. Yeah. I yeah. just wanted to acknowledge it. I wish I could. Uh, <laughs> oh, she, yeah. she's there. There she is. Oh, she's there sleeping she is. beside a toy version of herself. I was going to say, <laughs> it's funny, I, 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 I went, oh, about the pillow, about the, the toy yeah, version. Yeah. yeah. That, I mean, she was, usually she would be out of the room, but she was, she has been very needy lately, so I let her come in here and sleep, but yes. I think it's fantastic. To your audience. Yeah. None of us are sleep, secretly sleeping through this. It is the dog, in fact. It's the dog, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I don't think you're getting off topic at all. I, uh... so, so, so let me ask you this then. Um, if you think about how you might approach writing to a brief versus writing for yourself as an artist, do you find in any way that maybe writing to a brief comes sort of packaged with this set of boundaries with, you know, with this little box that you need to stay within that might help inspire you or might help focus you? Yeah, I mean, that's actually the biggest thing. I'm glad you said that because I lose sight of that all the time. Um, <clears throat> and I find that boundaries do, in fact, help me personally write. 
And that's exactly right. Like the, the brief is the box in which you need to put your thing. So it's it's not open to any idea or any genre of music or any emotion, you know, like they are sort of giving you all of that stuff. And it does, in fact, for me, it, because it's a muscle that you exercise as a work discipline, it makes me better at writing when I have that box. So um, as a sidebar, when I... Now, the last few records that I've made, I try to give myself a box because I know I'm generally more successful when, I'm, when I have a boundary. And that is from the skill of learning to write within boundaries, right? Um, so, yeah, I, try, so I take what I have learned in a few ways from the commercial discipline of writing and then bring it to myself. Um, in so stylistically i will do that sort of a general mood i'll try to do that mostly stylistically like like i want to write a rock record i want to write a record that sounds like david lynch movie music i want to write this new record is is going to be um like joe jacksony like look sharpie it's kind of my my post punk record hopefully i mean i keep writing songs that are outside of my brief but um, but yeah, the brief writing is really great. It also, the other thing that it makes me do, which I've taken out of commercial into my own writing, is that uh, if you're given a lyrical brief, like a lot of times when I'm writing for um, like a cartoon show when they don't give you lyrics, but they tell you what's happening in the scene and when the song is supposed to feature, I will like mine the script for the relevant information, the brief for relevant information. And then I will just like write and write and write, like brainstorm any idea, any sort of words that might do whatever. And then mine from that for the actual lyrics that I'm writing. Um, and that I have found as a writer coming up, sometimes when I people, you think you've written a good song, but then when you look back, you go, you know, I could have maybe worded this better, or I just slightly hit the mark, but didn't really fulfill the idea. And I find that the, the brainstorming and then mining from it is really helpful in your real writing too. Like I had always just been sort of an emotional writer, like it would blur it out. I, the, the craft of writing for me as a personally, as an artist was not really a craft. It was, it was more emotional writing. And I feel like from commercial writing now, I'm getting better at the discipline of, of writing. Like I sit down at my desk and go, okay, today I'm working on my record. And then I start writing a bunch of stuff. You know what I mean? And that is from definitely from the idea of um, giving yourself some, some boundaries and then also using those boundaries to write within, like prolifically, so that you have something to reference when you actually start writing your lyrics. I was I, I was getting all ready to ask you that very question about would, would, yeah. you, would you write yourself the boundaries? Would you write yourself the brief for your own artistry? Yeah, you answered that that's a, in advance. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, you guys obviously know me personally, and uh, I don't think it it's crazy to say out loud. So my, when John died last year, who was my partner, for people who don't know me, um, <clears throat> And I wanted to write a record this year and I didn't want it to just be a sad record. So for me to write a brief was very important. Like, like the brief is, is hope. Like it, it has to have some sort of message coming out of it that isn't just sadness. Um, so as an emotion, that is my brief. And then the stylistic brief hopefully will keep it later like i'm not going to allow myself to write 12 ballads of sad things like i want to <laughs> also and that's that's not just for for a brief of what i want to put out to the public it's also to to sort of um i don't know if you ever do this blair to to save myself a little bit emotionally like like in order to write deeply lyrics that mean something to you means you have to be open and raw yeah. And, and it, there is a limit to how much of that I want to do this year. 
You know I what I mean? Know. Like I don't I don't want to be an open raw yeah, person. I, I, I know exactly what you mean. Um I found that after I suffered a a, a, a a loss, a tragic loss, that people said to me several times, several different people, several, several different times said, well, at least you'll get some good songs out of it. And I just, you know, I, and I know they meant well, but it's a really terrible thing to say to a songwriter who's, who's been through something really dark like that. Um, it may be true that you might get some good songs out of it, but really that's, it's such a small consolation. And yeah, having to go there, um, in order to write the songs sometimes just doesn't seem worth it, frankly. I, I don't know that I want to do that um, just to get a song. Not that not that I don't value songs at all, but man, it's hard, you know. No, and I mean, your brain as a, as a writer is probably like, I have pages and pages of, of lyric ideas that pop in my head that have to do with grief and sadness. And uh, last week for the Christmas holidays, I usually like to try to write and finish something. So I started two songs and both of them ended up being essentially about my grief in different ways. Like it's kind of unavoidable that you will get a song out of it, but you're right. Like that is not some sort of consolation prize to losing someone you love. And it is also not something that you even want to think about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, it just has, if it happens, it's going to be organically. It's going to be d down the road. It's not, yeah, it's, it is not a great, no one has said that to me. So, well, I'm glad actually. Yeah. 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 No one has said that to me. Well, I, I think we need to, to wrap this one up, but, uh, um, uh, and I don't want to wrap it up on a somber note, particularly. I just want to reiterate what you said about boundaries. I think, I think setting boundaries for yourself as a writer, I think as artists, we think that, having a blank page and having and being able to write about anything is is fantastic and it is but it's also great when you say yes but i'm going to write about it this way and this way and and just set some parameters for yourself yeah and i mean the the just to also to end that up the, so using the the boundaries of writing for commercial also helps when you're writing for artists too right like for yourself is one thing it is a, it, it can be quite wide and you want boundaries for yourself but but specifically if you're writing for other people you can think of exactly who the artist is how the song would get used what you know what i mean like there's so much stuff that is really good and useful in creating those boundaries for sure yeah thank you so much for for joining us and uh, for sharing thank you for having me guys <laughs>